Liquid molecules rapidly switch between the surface and bulk domains. This is called fast exchange. And this is faster than the time scale of a single NMR experiment. That is why, in a measurement, we observe a single relaxation time. And the principle of surface particle analysis via relaxation NMR is based on the fact that the liquid in contact with the particle surface relaxes much more rapidly. Although both T1 and T2 depend on the rotation and translation motions of molecules, the magnitude of the shift may differ significantly because of the different way in which the two processes are linked to molecular motion. Experimentally, we typically observe a greater change in T2 compared with T1 for the same incremental change in concentration and or surface area. In general, when reagents such as acids and bases to change the solution pH or electrolytes to increase the solution conductivity are introduced into the liquid phase, it will have little or no impact on either T1 or T2 bulk liquid relaxation time, unless the species are ferro or paramagnetic ions. The same is true for surfactants, polyelectrolytes and polymers, unless their concentration is high enough that they create a separate phase. However, in this latter situation, the surfactant molecules, for example, can absorb at the particle surface and in so doing will displace any surface liquid molecules. This will result in a change in both the T1 and T2 relaxation time of a suspension. This change can be used to study adsorption-desorption phenomena at interfaces and is the subject of a future video. Either T1 or T2 relaxation can be used and the Exigo Acorn Area device provides both measurements. T2 is determined using what is termed a CPMG pulse sequence, while T1 is determined using either an inversion recovery or a progressive saturation pulse sequence. Here we show typical T2 and T1 data obtained on the same sample using the Exigo Area Quant software. Note that the value for T2 is less than the value for T1. So the question is, which method to use? First, it is important to note that both methods provide relevant data. However, each approach has advantages and disadvantages. And part of robust method development is to decide which relaxation time T1 or T2, is the more appropriate for a given application. One analogy here would be measuring the particle size of suspensions using either static or dynamic light scattering. Another analogy would be measuring zeta potential by electrophoretic or phase analysis light scattering, or measuring surface area by static gas absorption, the BET method, or by the Knudsen gas flow technique. Both T1 and T2 are influenced by the molecular environment at the particle liquid interface. Solution viscosity changes, surface polymer layers and microstructure, as well as impurities, all impact relaxation, but to a different degree for T1 and T2. For example, T2 can be more sensitive than T1 to the presence of elemental impurities especially ferromagnetic iron and paramagnetic species, for example, alumina, cobalt, copper, manganese. T2 is also more sensitive to changes in available and or accessible surface area. T2 values can become very small at very high concentrations, so making it difficult to distinguish between samples, and so is better for more dilute suspensions. An ideal concentration for T2 measurements would be in the range from about 10% to about 30%. The T2 measurement is technically more difficult, but is faster than T1, and so is better for samples in which the solid particles are sedimenting over time, or in emulsions where the droplets are creaming. T1 measurements work across the widest concentration range, and is ideal for highly concentrated systems 
solids of 60% or more, and high internal phase emulsions, hypes, where the internal phase can exceed 90%.